Welcome, welcome to Unhinge with the Door Dork, where door hardware nerds get together. We slam, we knock on uh, different door fails. We learn, we laugh, and sometimes we even cry. <laughs> but most importantly, we uh, have fun while we dork out on some doors. Um, today, we've got two lovely door hardware nerds with me um, here. And I'll let them uh, introduce themselves. Uh, Mia, why don't you kick us off and then we can go to Katie from there. Perfect. I'm Mia Merrill. I'm a senior product manager and I am also the head door hardware nerd. I produce, edit, uh, graphic design, anything else you can think of for door hardware nerds. So I'm happy to be here. And I'm Katie Flower. I am a training specialist and I've been in the industry for so long. Um, I geek out on doors and hardware all the time, and you can find me on the Door Hardware Nerd channel at the Code Corner with Katie. Yeah. Yes, that's a great segment. Definitely check it out. Um, okay, so for those who are not familiar with how Unhinge works, um, I will pop up different door uh, pictures up on the screen, and uh, we'll react, we'll slam, we'll knock on it and then uh, throw some helpful tips your way, and then we'll give it a knocking rating. One being not so bad, and 10 being pretty knocking bad. <laughs> okay, I'll share my screen. I'm hanging on the edge of my seat. <laughs> this is uh, door number one. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> This, this one is uh, pretty unique. Uh, what, what, what do you guys think uh, happened here? I think it's a storage of some kind and <laughs> they just needed room for the handrail. And it looks like it's got a disconnect so they can take that handrail off if they need to open the door to gain access. Um, doesn't look like it's a normally occupied room because it's raised up off that ramp. Yeah, I was wondering if the, because I can see some seaming on that handrail, so I was wondering if it was like a secret bat cave entrance. <laughs> it looks like it, yeah, it looks like it's removable right there where you need to. I, you know, maybe, I think it's an extra security measure, you know, like that's that's like whatever is behind that door, we want to keep behind that door, so they put those that railing up there. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should consider this, right? It's like, if you don't pay attention to it, don't draw attention, like you'll just leave it alone, right? This is tamper-proof. Right. Tamper resistant. I'm not going to say proof. Resistant. <laughs> yeah, my, my guess is that it used to be just a plain hallway, but they needed to make it ADA compliant, um, adding that ramp in there. And so they thought that is more important, which it probably is than that storage door. Okay, if you guys uh, gave it a knocking rating, what, what would you give this uh, door uh, knocking wise? One through 10. As long as the railing has some accessibility to the door, then pretty low. This is a two. It's it's super funny to have a conversation around, um, but could be pretty functional if it's only periodic access. Yeah, I agree. I, I wouldn't really knock it that hard. I think it's very creative. And again, it looks like an older building that they just had to renovate and make accessible. So I'll say two also. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> okay, we'll jump into the next one. So they're storing chemicals and fertilizer at the exit? Imagine, imagine running through this building in the case of an emergency and you came across this danger sign. You're like, whoa, wait a second. Maybe I shouldn't go in there, even though it says that's where the exit is. Um, I definitely think paths of egress should not be confusing. <laughs> well, they shouldn't be confusing. And it looks like it's, it's got spring hinges or some kind of different hinge. That's a three knuckle hinge, which you normally wouldn't see on a chemical and fertilizer storage area. You'd probably have a standard five knuckle ball bearing hinge. So I don't know if there's no closer on there, but from a chemical fertilizer storage area, that's considered high hazard. And from with those doors are swinging out from the chemical storage area, that looks to be an exit device trim that's upside down, but they are required to have an exit device in a high hazard uh, so I assume there's an exit device on the other side and that trim just looks like it's upside down. So that's a fail. And the hinges are, if there are spring hinges, that's a fail in my mind. And having a lighted exit sign above, if there is a lock on that trim, which we can't see from the picture, there is 
no code compliant way to exit through a place that's more dangerous and hazardous than where you're coming from. And so you're not supposed to exit through a locked door. That's probably a locked door. I don't know if that's an old exit sign or just misplaced, but you definitely are not allowed to exit through a high hazard occupancy unless you're in the occupancy and you're trying to get out, but that's completely backwards of what we're looking at. Yeah. And, and I don't know if I would want to, you know, like, <laughs> well, exactly. I mean, that's why the code writes it that way, because I mean, you're not supposed to exit through a kitchen. It, let's say you're in a dining room. They want to have separate exits to get you out of the dining area as fast as possible, but you're not supposed to exit through a kitchen where it could be slippery or where, you know, people could start to pile up because of obstructions and things like that. And it's the same thing here. Any closing comments before we give it a knocking rating? I'm going to knock the crap out of this one and give it a 10. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm assuming there's probably some explosive something in this area. So like during a fire, this is probably a bad room to be around. So yeah, it's going to, it's pretty egregious. It's going to have to be, I'll go with Katie. She's, she knows all the codes. It's a 10. <laughs> Anytime that you're endangering uh, lives, I think we've got to score it pretty high on the knocking rating. So yeah, this, this, this could be very dangerous, very scary. Okay, third and final door for today. Are you ready? What the heck am I looking at? <laughs> the new construction. What? Is, is the door short? It looks like it's like, not is it? Yeah. Yes. Or is yes. it just open? No, it's, it is short, um, but it was installed short. And then someone took the extra, went the extra mile and added the correct actual kick plate. That's the correct <laughs> kick plate, but for the wrong door. <laughs> nice. <laughs> wow. That's, that's pretty bad, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. What, that's, what, called, what, that's called no, no security, no anything. Uh, it's, it's no instead security. Of road, instead of a road to nowhere, it's a door to nowhere. I, I'm really glad they have that indicator on there just in case like someone's in there, you know, they can, instead of just peeking around the corner to see if someone's in there. They, that. <laughs> the kick plate alone is a hazard. The kick plate edges, they're sharp. And that point, that corner, man, if you stumble a little bit and you're going to kick your ankle and cut the Ugh, that's just but think if you're in a school how easy it would be to pass notes through this opening <laughs> <laughs> i don't know about you two ladies but uh i'm guessing that's a bathroom of some sort when i'm at my vo most vulnerable state you know <laughs> restroom i would like to have a door that closes all the way <laughs> yes yes and the fact that you've got such an expensive lock and the door can't even latch it's what a waste um Nice lever, nice, nice finish. They match the kick plate finish to the to the hardware finish. So you can't knock them for that. I don't know what the blue tape is left over on the door for. Maybe it says reorder me. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was a call out from either the owner or the, the contractor coming through. <laughs> yeah, that's the punch list. That's saying you've got to replace this. Like who would I I just don't even is that you know? that plate installer whoever whoever put that on there was like I, i'm just doing what i was told to do yeah i mean somebody got some part of this opening correct right because the kick plate is right so either somebody fat fingered the door order or the frame order or the frame mm -hmm. order but the opening no because the opening is prepped Right, the opening's prepped right, so the frame's right, and the kick plate's right. So somebody just entered that door order wrong, or wrote it down wrong, or yeah. Well, if if you guys don't notice, it's also um, a little it's wider up here than it is. Yeah, down. I, so I did notice not hung correctly either. So it's a skew. That's what they say is a skew. Well, I was it's wondering just... if that was just like forced perspective. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure if that was just the angle of the picture, but which I wasn't going to knock it for because that's a little excessive on the eighth inch gap, I would think. Just a little bit. <laughs> you, you missed it. The, you, you're that close. Yeah. 
Okay, so overall, last knocking score for door number three. What What do you ladies think? Well, I mean, it's a 10 because the door doesn't do its job. <laughs> yeah, we used to have an expression on pairs of doors that had a three eighths inch gap that it was a gap big enough to throw a cat through. Well, you can throw a lion through this one. And, and I'm not lying when I say that this door stinks and I give it a 10 for the knock rating. Nice. We had two tens in this round. I liked it. <laughs> well, thank you all for joining us. And thank you, me and Katie, for being here. It's always a pleasure to have some, uh, uh, some door hardware nerds uh, to help me knock on these doors. <laughs> um, join us next time for the next episode of Unhinged. Our doors are always open because they're unhinged. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. <laughs>